When you are in spirit, you are different from others. When you are in spirit, you are not ordinary. You are not common. You are not like any other being. Come a spiritual man. That you may have peace. And then he continued to say, because the carnal mind is the enemy against God. For it cannot subject to the law of God. No one indeed can, can be. So the carnal man or the carnal mind is enmity against God. So a carnal man is always an enemy of God because his mind is set against God. He always opposes God. He always fights fight against God. When the devil makes you carnal, he goes and rests to watch the game because he knows you are already against God. And God is against you. He is contrary to you. If you cannot keep the covenant ordinances, the devil relaxes. Because he is not the one who is going to destroy you. You are going to be destroyed by God himself. Because you have forsaken his law. You have so forsaken his word. So the devil knows. Once he sets you against the law of God, already you are destroyed. So when you are destroyed, it's not the devil who is destroying you. It's God himself. The Bible says, humble yourself before the mighty arm of God. And God will lift you at the right side. The Bible says, God gives grace to the humble. More grace to the humble. But he resists the pride. He resists the pride. So once you are set, is your heart is set against God. You are proud in your heart. You are formed an opposition against God. So God also forms opposition against you. God resists you, not devil. We are told to resist the devil, you will flee away. But now here, when your heart is lifted against God, God himself resists you. He resists the pride. But he gives grace to the humble. So when you humble yourself, you submit to the laws of God. You submit. You are a subject. That is, that's what proves your humility. You are able to be obedient. You subject yourself to the laws and ordinances of God. But the kind of man cannot do that. So always he is contrary to God. I pray that God will help you. To have a mind, to have a heart that can obey him. And then the Bible says, So then, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So when you are in flesh, God is not happy. You cannot. You can never submit to his law. You can never please him. So a spiritual man is a man who pleases God. It's a man who walks in faith and pleases God. The Bible says without faith it is impossible. It is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please Him. Because he who comes to Him must believe that He exists and is a wonder of them that seek Him diligently. Hebrews 11, 6. So without faith, you can never please God. So here we are told in Romans 8, 8. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. It means, it means those who are in flesh are not in faith. They are not in faith. You cannot be carnal and still time being faith. To be in faith, a man of faith is a spiritual man. Living in the spirit is living in faith. So once you begin to walk in faith, you are living in the spirit. We don't walk in the, in, according to the physical. We walk by faith. Living in faith is living in the spirit. A carnal man cannot please God because he has no faith. He does not have faith that is right before God. He cannot please him. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If Indeed, the Spirit of God dwells in you. So when the Spirit dwells in you, you are not in the flesh. But you are in the Spirit. You are in the Spirit because the Spirit of God dwells in you. So when the Spirit of God comes to me to, to dwell in you, He turns you around. 
You come from being a man of flesh or a woman of flesh and you become a woman of spirit. You become spiritual if the spirit dwells in you. So when this Holy Spirit of God has come upon you, you are now a man of the spirit. You are no longer a carnal person. You are a man of the spirit or you are a spiritual man. For if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not ace. So all kind of men, they don't belong to God. All men of the flesh, they are not of God. Those who are spiritual people, they belong to Christ. They are the ones that we can say they are born again. You cannot say you are born again when you are carnal. That is fake. You are born again, you become spiritual. That is why you see born again. You were born naturally, now you are born spiritually. And that is where Nicodemus could not understand. Nicodemus went to Jesus and asked the question, what shall I do to enter the kingdom of God? John 3. There was a man of Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God. For one, no one can do these things, these signs that you do unless God is with him. Nicodemus went to Jesus, John 3, from verse 1. And he wanted to know what he can do to be born again. And he recognized the works of Jesus and told Jesus, no one can do the things you do if God is not with him. So he knew for sure God was with Jesus. And then he continued and said, Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus comes. He wants to look at verse 2. Go back to verse 2 again. Say, this man came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher. Come from God. For one cannot do these things that you do unless God is with him. So he has recognized. So he has seen the things of the kingdom. He has known this person come from the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see, not even entering, not even inheriting, seeing, seeing, seeing. So there are levels, even in the kingdom. There is seeing the kingdom, in and uh, entering the kingdom and inheriting the kingdom. So, there are people even seeing, seeing, seeing. So you are seeing is not eating, seeing. Being allowed to be there, to be just a partaker, to be included. It requires someone to be born again. Look at this, Nicodemus said to him, how can a man born, be born when he is old? How can he enter a second time in his mother's home, but he will be born? He's now talking carnality. Jesus is spiritual. This man is carnal. Now, Jesus said, most assuredly I say to you, unless one, listen to me, you can see Jesus anytime he answers Nicodemus, he is vowing. The kind of men cannot easily be convinced. They are convinced by vows. They are convinced. When you vow, the, the kind of man now begins to see seriousness on board what you are saying. They don't just receive things. That's why Jesus, the first time he opens the mouth to speak to Nicodemus, is vowing. Assuredly. Assuredly. Verily. That's a vow. So he says, Jesus answered most assuredly. 
I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom. So Jesus has moved from seeing into entering. No one will enter. So, you are born again. You see the kingdom. You are born again of water and spirit. You enter the kingdom. And then say, when you finish there, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. So you must reach a level where now you move from the flesh. Because what is born of flesh is flesh. And which is born of the spirit is the spirit. It's the spirit. So you say, what is born of the spirit is the spirit. What is born of the flesh is the flesh. So you must be born of the spirit, not of the flesh. And then he says, Don't, do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. Not going back to your mother's womb, but by the spirit and water. And then he says this, this is what I was looking. The wind blows where it wishes. Look at this. So if the wind wants to go to east, it goes to east. If the wind wants to go to west, it goes to west. Where it wishes. Where it wishes. And do you hear the sound of it? So you will hear the motion of the wind. The sound of the wind as it moves. But you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. You don't know where it is coming from. You don't know the source of the weed. Where is the weed coming? You just hear it blowing his chest. When they measure, they don't measure the source of the weed. They measure direction, the strength. They don't know the source. The mobs, the whatever it wishes. Nobody knows where it is coming from. And nobody knows from where, where the weed will go next. They don't tell you. This weed will turn east after it reaches there. It will go west. It will go south. Mm, you don't know. It will go where it wishes. So no one knows where the weed is going. Or where it comes from. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. So when you are born of the Spirit, you become weed. You walk like weed. You move like weed. There is no limitation. The spiritual man judges all things. But he himself is not a subject to any judgment. So when you become spiritual, you are able to overrule things. You are able to have dominion over all things. And nothing evil can dominate you. Nothing evil has the power of your life. I pray that from today you will move uh, from carnality and become spiritual. So when you are born of the spirit, the spirit of God dwells in you. When it dwells in you, you are really in the spirit. And when you are in the spirit, you are able to please God. Hallelujah. So when God dwells in you, you are in the spirit. Now look at this.